guarantee anything about no so there you have to be a little careful and you have to you have to massage things a little bit um, uh, and the book goes through a, a bunch of uh, basically some metric arguments where you start with um, uh, with uh, balls as uh, you know bigger than you need and take smaller things where you you go with for uh, ball, delta balls that go, that relate to epsilon over two et cetera et cetera but um, the, the book sort of does a let's see a different different argument but you should look at it. Let me give you an argument that that might be somewhat that might be easier to digest. I think uh, I like it better. It also appeals to a famous lemma, which we'll prove. It starts off exactly the same way, though. So um, let's suppose we're we st we're given an epsilon bigger than zero, and our goal, of course, is to find a delta. And this delta better work for all p, for all points p. OK. okay. So as we noted, each point uh, in, this, in this interval, x, has a delta ball. It, it might depend on x, so I'll call it a delta x ball that uh, satisfies the, con the condition. What condition? Such that if I look at the distance from any other point um, uh, y to x and demand that it's less than delta, then in fact the distance between f of y and f of x is less than what? It's less than anything I, would, I, 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 I could possibly name. Might be if I if I wanted to, that I could put epsilon here, and I could find a delta that works. Yeah, you're right. This should be delta sub x, right? But um, for now, I, I'm just for now. If you don't mind, I'm going to put something here. It's a placeholder because I will see later what I need this to be. Okay, so I'll just put a little smiley face here. Okay, you you name a smiley, and I can make this true for a particular delta x. That might depend on x. With me? OK, we'll see in a second what that should be. I'm trying to motivate this argument for you. OK, so the delta x balls cover, these cover uh, x. So there is a finite subcover. Yes. So l let me just, in fact, let me let me just um, draw some sample delta balls now. Here's one, and um, oh, here's another, and here's another. So let me finish. Let me suggest this. So there's a. Well, actually, I, I, I'm not. In fact, I'm not even going to appeal to this yet. But here's a question for you. Would you agree I'd be done with my argument if I could show that, for a small enough distance, if you give me two points that are close enough, any time I throw them down randomly in this picture, boom. That they lie in one interval? Would you agree that that ought to be true? Why? Is it necessarily true? If it were true, here's the claim. So here's a question, and then I'll, I'll show you if we could answer this question, we'd be done. So can I find a delta such that if the distance between two points is less than delta, then uh, P and Q are in the same uh, cover, uh, element of the cover, in a same co cover <coughs> element, cover set. 
if I could do that, then then here's the 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 the, the thing that it would enable me to say. Because then what I could say is that the distance between p and q, if you if you find me for any p and q, like here here's a p and a q. Would you agree they live in in one of the co in completely they both live in one element of the cover, namely this one? Yes. If you could do that, then I could bound the distance between p and q by their distance to the center point of this cover. Right? What's the center point? This is in some cover set that's centered around x. Then the distance between p and q is less than or equal to the distance between p and x plus the distance between q and x, yes? And then what? Well, for that x, it had a delta x. Uh, it, um, sorry, for that x, uh, if I were within, um, uh, if I were close enough, then their images would be less than, than, uh, than smiley, right? So the distance between, what do I want? Um, for then the distance between p and q is bounded by the distance between px and qx. And the fact that these things, OK, so I just, um, just realize that I, I need to be a little careful here. Distance between p and q is less than distance from p to x and q to x. Okay. Uh, and what does that mean? Yes, this is true no matter what. But I'm I'm now trying to get a. Um, a conclusion that that relies on the fact that they're in the same. Well, no, this I can do this because they're in the same cover set. So I can compare the distance. Oh, thank you. Actually, this is not at Q P and Q. This is F of P and F of Q. This is what I want to compare. Yes, I knew there was something that I. So uh, this is f of p and f of q. This is f of p, f of x, f of q, and f of x. This is better. So now the distance between f of p and f of q is bounded by these two things. Yes? And now these two things are going to be bounded as long as p and q are within the same delta ball, then, uh, then they are within the same delta sub x, right? So these things are both going to be bounded by smiley over 2, or smiley plus smiley, if p and x the distance between p and x is less than, uh, um, since the distance between p and x is less than delta sub x. And the distance of between q and x is less than delta sub x. Because they were in the same ball. And so what do I want if I want this to be less than, um, than, uh, than epsilon. <laughs> if I want this to be less than epsilon, then I need to make smiley epsilon over two. So this that's the choice I had to I should make here. This really should have been epsilon over two. Okay. So what do I have? I have the requisite bound. If, if I could find a delta that's small enough so that any time two things are within delta, they live in the same one of, element of one of these covers, then certainly they're within delta x of each other, because that's what this cover is, right? This cover is a delta x ball. 